everyone, we are from group 7 in Flanders Fields group. In this video, we would like to talk about an analysis of a poem titled In Flanders Field. This video will contain first, general information of the poem, the second, stanza analysis, and the third, line break, and the fourth is intrinsic elements including theme, message, figure of speech, figure of sound, rhyme, imagery, and also symbolism. And the fifth is extrinsic elements including writer biography and also historical events and its relation to today's era. In Flanders Fields In Flanders Fields the poppies blow between the crosses row on row That mark our place And in the sky the larks their breathly singing fly Scarce heard amid the guns below We are the dead Short days ago we lived Fell down So sunset glow Loved And were loved and now we lie in Flanders fields. Take up our quarrel with the foe. Through you from failing hands we throw the torch. Be yours to holy lie. If you break faith with us who die, we shall not sleep. Though poppies grow in Flanders fields. About the poem, the poem in Flanders Field is a radio written by John McRae, a famous poet, soldier, and physician during that time. He wrote the poem and was first published in 1915 in England's Punch as a memorial to those who died in World War I, Battlefall in the region of Belgium, known as Ypres Salian. The poem particularly describes the tragedy of the soldiers dead in battle during World War I as well as the, on as well as the ongoing natural beauty that surrounds their graves. Okay, now I want to explain about the stanza analysis. So, in Flanders Field poem, there are 15 lines and then we divide it uh, into three stanzas. The first stanza that consists of five lines that we call Sin Queen. And then the second stanza that consists of four lines that we call Quatrain. And the last stanza that consists of six lines that called Sestet. Line Break. For the first stanza, we break the line into two parts. The first part, in Flanders fields, the poppies blow between the crosses row and row. In this line, the author wants to tell there were flowers called poppies, which symbolize the dead blow in Flanders field. This line is also as introduction of the setting. And the second line break. Mark our place in the sky. The larks still bravely singing fly. Scarce heard amid the guns below. In this line, the author wants to tell that the chirping of birds was also very difficult to hear because it is covered by the sound of gunfire in battle. And uh, in the second stanza, it is divided into three line break. The first one, we are the dead. In this line, the author wants to tell that he and any other soldiers were like dead people 
they couldn't feel peacefulness in their life. And the second line, short days ago, we lived, felt down, saw sunset glow, loved and were loved. In this line, the author wants to tell that all the time before the battle happened, they could enjoy and feel the peace and beauty of the nature. And the last line, and now we lie in Flanders field. In this line, the author wants to tell that they actually died in the field of Flanders. And the last stanza, it is divided into three uh, line break. The first one, take up our quarrel with the foe. To you from falling hands we throw the torch. In this line, the author wants to tell the reader that he wanted the reader to continue their fight by uh, liken their fight to torch that they couldn't continue to hold. For the second part, be yours to hold it high. In this line, the poet asked to the reader to take the responsibility seriously. For the last part in third stanza, if you break faith with us who die, we shall not sleep. Tau poppies grow in Flanders fields. In this line, the author told the reader that if they uh, betrayed them, the soldier who died by not continuing to fight, they will not rest in peace. Now, we talk about intrinsic elements in this poem. So the theme of this poem is darkness due to the battle in Flanders fields that took a lot of casualties. And then the message in this poem is that war is not the way to create a peaceful world. As human beings, we should love one another. War only brings destruction to those who are involved in it. However, if a war has occurred, a war to create world peace, we must fight for it for the good of the world. Now, we talk about the figure of speech in this poem. The first figure of speech is hyperbole. Hyperbole is a figure of speech that uses exaggerated figurations to express something. In another sense, expressing something excessively and unreasonably. In this poem, there is one hyperbole which is found in the second line in the third stanza. To you, from failing hands, we throw the torch. In this line, it says that failing hands throws the torch. Failing hands here are men as people who have died and the torch here is meant as hope. The dead souls are not actually throwing the torch. Instead, it represents the hope they are presenting to the world. The second figure of speech is personification. Personification is a figure of speech that likens humans to objects or creatures other than humans. In another sense, making inanimate objects or creatures other than humans seems to have animate properties or traits that humans usually do. In this poem, there is one personification which is in the fourth line in the first stanza. The larks still bravely singing, fly. In this line, it says that the larks are singing, while the larks is actually cannot sing. The author 
intends to replace the chirping of birds with the word singing. And the third figure of speech is metaphor. Metaphor is the use of words or groups of words that is not with the actual meaning but as a description based on similarities or comparisons. In this poem, there are three metaphors that are in the line We Are the Dead, which is intended as a comparison between older soldiers to the dead and referring them as already dead. Failing hands, which is meant as a person who has died or dead souls. And the torch, which is meant as hope. Figures of sound. If you talk about figures of sound, in Flanderfield's poem uses repetition and also alliteration. The first figures of sound is repetition. Repetition is the use of the same word or phrase again and again for emphasis. In Flanderfield's consists three repetition. For example, in Flanderfield's the pope is below in line one. In Flanders Fields in line 9 and also in Flanders Fields in line 15. John mentioned in Flanders Fields three times in this book. Alliteration. The second feature of sound is alliteration. Alliteration is the repetition of the beginning sounds of neighboring words, the repetition of consonant sounds at the beginning of words or stressed syllables. Example of alliteration from the poem are F sound in In Flanders Fields the Pope is Blow in line 1 F sound in To You from Failing Hands with Row in line 11 and S sound in We Live Fell Down So Sunset Glow in line 7 Rhyme we will talk about the rhyme of the in Planet Fields poem. This poem is using an end rhyme. Its rhyme is AABBA for the first stanza, AABC for the second stanza, and AABBAC for the last stanza. The first stanza. In Flanders Fields, the pulp is blown using A rhyme between the crosses row on row using A rhyme that marks our place and in the sky using B rhyme the lark still briefly singing fly using B rhyme skates hurts amid the guns below using A rhyme and the second stanza we are the dead short days ago using A rhyme we lift fell down so sunset glow using A rhyme Love said we're loved, and now we lie. Using B rhyme in Flanders Fields, using C rhyme. And the third stanza. Pick up our quarrel with the foe, using A rhyme. To you from fairly hands we throw, using A rhyme. The torch be yours to holy lie, using B rhyme. If you break faith with us, we die. You sing B rhyme. We shall not sleep, though poppies grow. You sing A rhyme. And the last is in Flanders fields. You sing C rhyme. So that we know that A rhyme represents O sound. B rhyme represents I sound. And the C rhyme represents Eels sound. Imagery. Imagery is used to make the readers perceive things with their five senses. John has used imagery that are appealing in the sense of sight such as In Flanders field, the poppies blow, sunset glow, and between the crosses, row on row. The next is symbolism. Symbolism is using symbols to signify the ideas and qualities, giving them symbolic meanings that are different from the literal meanings. 
John has used a lot of symbols in this poem, such as in the word Hobbies, that symbolize the dead souls, and the word Torch is the symbols of hope. Similarly, Rose of Poppies symbolize the Rose of Dead Soldier, and the word Larks are the symbol of life. John McQuay, a Canadian doctor and teacher, was born on November 30, 1872, in Guelph, Ontario. McQuay taught English and Mathematics at the Ontario Agricultural College in Guelph before returning to the University of Toronto in 1893. He graduated with his bachelor's degree the following year and received a Bachelor of Medicine degree in 1898. With the onset of the South African War in October 1899, McRae felt an obligation to serve in the armed forces. However, because he was seeing the inadequate treatment of the sick and injured soldiers on the battlefield, he decided to resign for several years and returned in 1901. As the first shots of World War I were fired in the summer of 1914, Canada as a member of the British Empire became involved in the fight as well. McRae was appointed brigade surgeon to the 1st Brigade of Canadian Field Artillery. In April 1915, McRae was stationed in the trenches near Ypres, Belgium in an area known as Flanders during the bloody Second Battle of Ypres. In the midst of the tragic warfare, McRae's friend, 22-year-old Lieutenant Alexis Helmer, was killed by artillery fire and buried in a makeshift grave. The following day, McRae, after seeing the field of makeshift graves blooming with wild poppies, wrote his famous poem in Flanders Fields, which would be the second to last poem he would ever write. In the past times, around the 19th century, war was one of the most common things to see. War occurred physically that took lives. It happened due to world instability in overcoming political problems, alliances, imperialisms, nationalisms, and several other problems. As in the poem in Flanders Field raised the story of the war in Prusalient, armed or involved Canadian soldiers struggling to fight invaders resulted in high numbers of casualties. The spirit of poetry is encouraging and urges soldiers not to be discouraged by the death of their companions, but to see life and death cyclically and the sacrifice of others as an example of duty and responsibility. Compared to this era, 20th century, there is similarity. The similarity is to this generation is also struggling. We are also facing a war, invisible war. We are not completely independent yet. Fighting spirit to overcome this invisible war becomes the duty and responsibility for the current generation. For example, many poor people suffer from many corrupt officials who only care about themselves. In other side, we are facing invisible war in health sector. For instance, fight against the virus COVID-19. To this struggle can kill and attack in silence. Many lives have been lost due to the human greed and the deadliest virus we are facing today. So, behind the suffering, we must rise up, have the fighting spirit to be able to get out of this war. It has been shown that John McRae's poem in Flanders Field is an elegant example of the power of poetry to express misery and patient feelings through poetic and easy to understand words. Through the great usage of figurative language such as hyperbole, personification, metaphor, imagery, symbolisms, and beautiful rhyme, this writer successfully delivers the message that the loss of someone we love is very painful and sad. However, we must not get discouraged by the deaths of our fellows, but to view life and death as cyclic and the sacrifice of others as an example of duty and responsibility. Finally, we have come to the last part of our video about the poem analysis. 
Hopefully, this video can improve our knowledge of the poem, and may all those we have shared be beneficial for all of us. And thank you for watching.